Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're here for the Infosys Springboard CSS3 assessment and you're looking to score 100%, then you're exactly where you need to be. In this video, I've solved all the questions from the CSS3 assessment, no explanations, just direct answers, quick and to the point. This isn't just about getting you a pass tag, whether it's this course or any other assessment video on my channel, I guarantee full marks, not just barely scraping through. So if you're serious about getting that score 100% on your screen, then stick around, follow along, and let's get it done. All right, once you click on the Start button, you'll see a few important pop-up instructions. They'll mention that you can't switch tabs, and the assessment needs to be given in full screen mode. Make sure you follow those instructions properly, otherwise it might auto-submit or disqualify your test. Now without any further delay, let's jump straight into the assessment and get that 100%. Question 1. Look at the below code. Which of the following is correct with respect to the above code rendered on the browser? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, only hi will appear in red color. Option B, only by will appear in red color. Option C, both hi and by will appear in red color. Option D, none of the hi or by will appear in red color. The correct answer is option A. Only high will appear in red color. Let's move to the next question. Question 2. Look at the below code. Which of the following is false about transitions? Select any two. This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. Transition will not occur as the transition timing functions is not specified to the transition property. Option B. Transition of width, height, and background color of the div element happens as soon as the page is loaded in the browser as transition delay is not specified. Option C. Transition will happen as the transition duration are specified for individual properties. Option D. None of the options. The correct answer is option A and option B. Let's move to the next question. Question 3. John wants to prevent CSS injections attack in his web application. Help John to identify right meta tag to use in a web page, restricting web page to use styling only from the origin, same as page is being served, and from the domain https colon slash slash xyz.com. The correct answer is option D. Let's move to the next question. Question 4. Look at the below code. What would be the value of the left and top properties after three seconds, according to the above code? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, left 0 picks, top 0 picks. Option B, left 0 picks, top 100 picks. Option C, left 100 picks, top 0 picks. Option D, left 100 picks, top 100 picks. The correct answer is option C, left 100 picks, top 0 picks. Let's move to the next question. Look at the below code. What would be the color of div when the animation ends? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, orange because the last keyframe value, 100% is not specified. Option B, green because 50% is considered as the last keyframe. Option C, animation will not work because last keyframe value, 100% is not specified. Option D, none of the given options. The correct answer is option A, orange, because the last keyframe value, 100% is not specified. Let's move to the next question. Question six, what is the value of property border top right radius in the below code? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, 90px. Option B, 0px. Option C, 30px. Option D, data missing in the code. The correct answer is option B, 0px. Let's move to the next question. Question seven, look at the below code. What would be the text color and background color of the paragraph before the animation starts? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, aqua and black. Option B, yellow and pink. 
Option C, white and gray. Option D, none of the options. The correct answer is option B, yellow and pink. Let's move to the next question. Question eight. Look at the below code. What would be the output when the above code is rendered on the web page? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, the corner of the div will curve horizontally. Option B, the corner of the div will curve vertically. Option C, the corners will not be curved. Option D, error will be thrown. The correct answer is option C, the corners will not be curved. Let's move to the next question. Question nine, look at the below code. Which of the following is the correct option to create spacing between heading and paragraph? Select any two. This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, margin top for P tag. Option B, padding top for H1 tag. Option C, spacing for P tag. Option D, margin bottom for H1 tag. The correct answer is option A and option D. Let's move to the next question. Question 10. When the below web page is rendered on the browser, what would be the position of div when the mouse hovers on it? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. The div will be moved 100px to the right. Option B. The div will be moved 100px upwards. Option C. The div will be moved 100px downwards. Option D, the div will be moved 100px to the left. The correct answer is option C, the div will be moved 100px downwards. Question 11. Look at the below code. Which of the following is correct with respect to the above code snippet? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, text shadow will not be displayed as text shadow property has additional value. Option B, only first text shadow will be applied ignoring the second shadow. Option C, both the text shadows will be applied for the text. Option D, none of the given options. The correct answer is option C, both the text shadows will be applied for the text. Let's move to the next question. Question 12, look at the below code. Ploy wants to increase the size of an element by four times the current size over four seconds when hovered on div. Ploy wants the size of the element to be increased incrementally for every second. Which of the following styling statements should Ploy use to achieve the above requirement? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. The correct answer is option D. Let's move to the next question. Question 13. Mr. Sunil wants to design a bouncing ball animation. Sunil wants multiple balls to bounce within the specified container from the top edge of the container to the bottom edge of the container. So Sunil has defined the following animation. Now Sunil wants the balls to start bouncing at different timing. Which of the following should Sunil use? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. Sunil cannot achieve this requirement using animation. Transition should be used. Option B. Sunil needs to specify separate animation for each ball element. Option C. The animation should specify the top property instead of bottom and use the animation for all the ball elements. Option D. Sunil can specify the same animation for all the balls and only needs to change the animation delay. The correct answer is Option D. Sunil can specify the same animation for all the balls and only needs to change the animation delay. Let's move to the next question. Question 14. The font family property is specified for a paragraph in the web page as shown in the below code snippet. Which of the following is or false about the above snippet? Select any three. Option A. The font family property can take only the fonts which are supported by the browser. Otherwise, there will be an error. Option B, the font family Arial should be mentioned in quotes. Option C, multiple font families cannot be specified to the font family property. Option D, none of the options. The correct answer is option A, option B, and option C. Let's move to the next question. Question 15, look at the below code. 
which of the following has valid values for all the parameters of color code HSLA to style the paragraph element? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. The correct answer is option A. Let's move to the next question. Question 16. Look at the below code. What would be the text color and background color of the paragraph after the animation ends? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, white and gray. Option B, yellow and pink. Option C, aqua and black. Option D, none of the options. The correct answer is option C, aqua and black. Let's move to the next question. Question 17. Look at the below code. What is the reason for the div element not transiting? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. Transition duration is not specified. Option B. Transition delay is not specified. Option C. Transformation is not specified on the div. Option D. None of the options. The correct answer is option A. Transition duration is not specified. Let's move to the next question. Question 18. Look at the below code. Which div will be selected when the below styling code is used? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, only first div. Option B, only second div. Option C, both the divs are selected. Option D, neither first div nor second div. The correct answer is option C, both the divs are selected. Let's move to the next question. Question 19. Which of the following option is correct if the below code is rendered in the browser? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. Content of H1 tag is not styled. Option B. Content of H1 tag is styled for only background color. Option C. Content of H1 tag is styled for both font family and background color. Option D. Content of H1 tag is styled for only font family. The correct answer is option C. Content of H1 tag is styled for both font family and background color. Let's move to the next question. Question 20. Look at the below code. What would be the output when the above web page is rendered on the browser? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. The entire image will be placed at the corners of the paragraph as the image will not be sliced since the border slice value is not specified. Option B. The paragraph will be rendered with border image by considering the border slice value as 10%, which is the default. Option C. The paragraph will not be rendered with border image as border slice value is not specified. Option D. None of the given options. The correct answer is option A. Let's move to the next question. Question 21. Look at the below code. Sajit wants the background color of div to be blue when the browser's width is between 520 and 699 px. Which of the choice is correct for this requirement? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. The correct answer is option C. Let's move to the next question. Question 22. Look at the below code. Which of the following is correct with respect to the above code? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. Border radius will affect all the corners. Option B. Border radius will affect only top left corner. Option C. Border radius will affect only top right corner. Option D. Border radius will affect only top left and bottom right corners. The correct answer is option A. Border radius will affect all the corners. Let's move to the next question. Question 23. Look at the below code. What would be the output of the above code snippet? This one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A. Paragraph 1, Paragraph 2, Paragraph 3, and Paragraph 4 are rendered in green color. Option B. Paragraph 2, Paragraph 3, and Paragraph 4 are rendered in green color. Option C. Paragraph 2 and Paragraph 3 are rendered in green color. Option D. None of the paragraph will appear in green color. The correct answer is option C. Paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 are rendered in green color. Let's move to the next question. Question 24. 
Look at the below code. The style mentioned below is an example of this one includes a code snippet, so take a look at it on the screen. Option A, attribute match. Option B, exact value match. Option C, contains match. Option D, subcode match. The correct answer is option B, exact value match. Let's move to the next question. Question 25. Sam wants the footer to appear at the bottom of the user's window in all the web pages uniformly. Which of the below properties should be used? Option A, position and bottom. Option B, display and float. Option C, position and float. Option D, display and bottom. The correct answer is option A, position and bottom. So guys, as you can see on the screen, we've solved all the questions successfully. Now to move ahead, simply click on the proceed to section button at the bottom. Now to finish the test, just click on the finish test button. Once you do that, your result will instantly appear on the screen, and if you followed along correctly, you should see that perfect 100% score. And that's it, guys. I hope you got a perfect 100% on your CSS3 assessment. If this video helped you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more assessment solutions from Infosys Springboard and other platforms. Also, check out my other videos if you're taking assessments from different courses. All of them are solved for full marks, not just to pass. Drop a comment if you want help with any specific test, and I'll try to cover it in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.